hi guys. Um, Marky Poos here. Uh, look, a number of you guys have been asking um, about, uh, you know, where I'm at with mental health, my mental health and stuff like that. You, a while back we used to do things called How Do You Feel, which was like an attempt to do um, a sort of video diary or a daily sort of update on how one's feeling mentally. Um, and, you know, sometimes it crops up in the vlogs and I know that a number of people out there also relate to, you know, a lot of the stuff around, you know, um, addiction, depression, bipolar, anxiety, all that kind of malarkey. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm, I, I'm sure that if I was kind of a viewer of it, I'd be thinking, well, where's he at? He seems very happy. And now here's the thing. I am incredibly happy when you see me happy. But that's like 90, that's 10% of the time that, that we're sort of living our lives. And that's not to say 90% of the time I'm not. And that's not to say that as soon as the camera goes down, I'm not. But I do try to present my best me because obviously for a vlog and, you know, we want them to be entertaining. We want them to be stimulating. We're entertainers. We're program makers, essentially. That's what we, you know, that's what we do. But at the same time, we want to be authentic and we want to be ourselves. And we are all of those things. But yeah, I mean, behind all of that and alongside all of that is this side of me. And this side of me right now is the side of me that is probably me most of the time when we're not sort of being sort of a bit sort of silly and what have you. Um, and yeah, I mean, my life is a life that revolves around work, children and um, my mental health. Now, when I say my mental health, you know, I, I must admit, I, I, you know, where I've encountered problems with mental health issues is 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 in terms of not solely wanting to be defined in those terms. Um, I remember Izzy, my eldest, a while back saying, you know, Dad, are you sure you're all right talking about all this stuff on, on, on your social media platforms? Be because I don't want you to give too much of, not too much of yourself away, but I don't want you to make yourself vulnerable. And I thought it was a really sweet thing that she was saying, and I understood what she was saying. And in a weird way, that's why it kind of ground to a halt for a bit and why we sort of decided that we would touch upon it on occasions. Um rather than focus on it so heavily, because actually it did become quite a strain to sort of... I felt like I almost not needed to perform mental health issues, but I needed to deliver something new within each film. So, that, that you know, this idea of doing a sort of regular update became a bit... became a bit tough, a bit difficult, a bit of a, an unnatural thing. But I thought today, I thought, well, you know what, just before I go into this meeting, I thought, well, why don't I just, yeah, touch base with you guys and just... So, yeah, how are you? Ask you, how are you? Because I think on a daily basis, I struggle with managing the time that's required or the attention that's required to looking after all of my issues. Um, I can apply lots of time to work. I can apply lots of time to the girls, daughters. I can apply lots of time to thinking about how I can be better with Nadia and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, but I don't apply any time. I'm, I'm very bad at managing my, me time insofar as looking after me and being kind to me. And I think one of the biggest problems I have with my mental health is, is a constant, constant inner critic. A constant sense that I am somehow failing, not achieving, not accomplishing, you know, whether it be professionally, socially, familiarly, emotionally, uh, physically, whatever. Um... And the problem for me is, is that my, the way my brain is wired, it's a little bit like one of those toys that kids have where, you know, if a thing pops up and you hammer it down and then a thing pops up and you hammer it down, then it comes up somewhere else. There's always something in your life that you can be, that you can put, you can hold, it, it, you know, as, as the key key point that, that means that everything's not going right. Now, I think everyone does that. Everyone does that. And that's why I've often said in a lot of the stuff that we've done, I think everyone suffers from elements of, of mental health issues. I think everyone has. I mean, we, all have a men we all have a mind. We all have mental thoughts, as in them of the mind. Therefore, we all have issues. It's like if you look at the diagnostic, um, key diagnostic uh, definitions of depression, everyone has encountered depression or depressive episodes in their lives just like I think everyone isn't an alcoholic but everyone has had alcoholic moments or not everyone is an out and out addict but we are all kind of addicted it's the human condition I do think it's the human condition and therein lies the problem for me because I think it is such a huge part of being a human and because I'm open to that and because I recognize that and because I you know 
I don't deny that that's a possible thing. That's why I sometimes struggle with the idea that I'm somehow more different to other people just because I recognise it, you know, just because I, I've sort of said I am these things. I think a lot of people who are undiagnosed are also all these things and they're often the people who are sort of pointing the finger going, you're this, you're this, you're that. Anyway, so where am I at actually in myself? I am at a point where I feel like something needs to change in terms of how kind I am to myself. I think something has to change in terms of... You know, I'm not going to CBT, I'm not going to AA, I'm not on antidepressants. And yet, I feel like I need something to just even me out. Because whilst the highs are great, and when I talk about highs, I'm talking about the emotional highs, the sort of intense sort of excitements and the spikes of interest and all that kind of stuff. There, are, You know, the lows are really, obviously they're hidden from camera, but they're very low. And... You know, I, I'm beginning to almost hide them a little bit from Nadia because there's only so much that someone living with someone who suffers from these things can say. And I get worried, if I'm honest, that if I keep sort of showing how dark I feel or how bleak I can feel at times, she might just kind of get fed up of saying the same thing. And I'm not wanting her to say the same thing, but I think this is a problem for couples. This is a problem for people in relationships where depression or you know, uh, a bipolar sort of hue is, is in is in there. So, um, yeah, so, I, I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm at a stage in my, in my mental health where I'm trying to work out in my own life how I can connect with those meaningful friends that I do have in a way that's kinder to them, kinder to me, sustains me, allows me to sort of feel... Like I can show some of myself. I suppose the weird thing is, is that for saying I feel like I talk about everything all the time, I feel like most of what I'm feeling is so hidden inside. I feel like it's all so private. I feel like it's so sort of locked into my chest. And even as I'm speaking now, I sort of almost feel anxious that it's it's going to come out. So that there's almost the... What I'm saying now is the kind of the PR version of a much, much more complicated, twisted kind of... Uh, uh, gnarly kind of inside so I'm toying with a number of things I'm toying with either going to the doctor and asking for a different type of antidepressant pill to the one that I was on last time because the one I was on last time just felt like loads of cotton wool had been shoved in my ears and it was filling my head and my entire perception of the world was foggy and muggy and I like to be acute because when you're writing or developing program ideas or when you're, you're writing scripts, or when you're editing, or when you're shooting stuff, or whatever it is you're doing. Or if you're, you know, I do a lot of work in finance, financial markets, you need to be sharp, you need to have your wits about you. And that, those drugs have taken that away from me. I don't know if there is a drug that you can take that doesn't take the edge off things, because in a sense that's what you're asking for from the drug. Then there's the CBT thing. And yeah, I get it. All of the stuff about negative thinking, all of the stuff about how to stop negative thinking. And I loved using that analogy that my CBT uh, therapist used of pretending that, you know, every time a negative thought comes in, go through the sort of court of law process, be the prosecution, be the defence. And, you know, for every negative thought you think, you know, you could think this car's going to crash into that wall, but you could also, why not think this car isn't going to crash into that wall? It's all, it sounds easy, but sometimes, sometimes I don't, sometimes it sounds awful, but sometimes you're not in, a, in the right state of mind or, or in the right space to kind of sit down and rationally think like that or sort of unpack it like that. You know, you, often you're just reacting. Often in life, you're just firefighting things, aren't you? And when I say firefight, I mean, it might just be a text that's come in and it triggers you in a certain way. And you're like, well, I, I haven't got time to sit here, make a note, think of the negative thought. Da, 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 da. So sometimes that doesn't work for me. But that doesn't doesn't mean I won't go back. And I know Nadia feels that when I was going to that, um, I was a lot better. And then the other thing is AA meetings. Um, and AA meetings are a tricky one for me because on the one hand, they allow for some kind of, not religious, but a sort of spiritual connection with others where you're just sitting in a room. It's a bit meditative and you don't have to say anything or you can say something and you're connected and you can hear stories and you can hear the craziness of our minds, our addict minds in other people. And you go, oh, right, OK, I'm not the only one who thinks that. And that is a salve. That is a 
Now, it does calm you. It does sort of make you feel like you, you're not alone. But then I have the same fundamental social issues around connecting with that person. So, you know, you'll often get this very, you know, there's nothing worse than a room of about 50 recovering alcoholics, all incredibly self-conscious, riddled with self-doubt, fear, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, sober, but at the end of a meeting, you know, you can tell that the last thing all of us want to do is really connect because actually we're too worried about connecting. So, you know, I've struggled with that. And yet at the same time, you know, a sponsor, I have had two or three sponsors in the past. Sadly, I've had absolute barking mad nut jobs for one or two sponsors. And, you know, in many ways, they, they didn't not, I could see how it was helping them, but they weren't necessarily helping me. Um, so I do struggle with AA. I do, there is a safety in walking through the door, but it, it sometimes it feels an entirely negative definition of myself. Then there are lots of other organisations that Nadia's been banging on about. She read a book about, you know, the sober life or something. And, and I get that. But the funny thing about all that is, and I see it on Nadia's Insta, on the family Insta story, Instagram account, people that we follow, they seem very female skewed. And that makes me feel a bit weird. Although I prefer female company, I don't know. I sort of also want to... I don't know. I don't know. I, I struggle with reaching out. I struggle with walking into a room and being myself. I struggle with just trusting that people will accept who I am rather than what I am or, you know, what I've done or what I, you know, what, how, what sort of an alcoholic was he? What sort of a program maker is he? What sort of a this is he? What sort of a social media person? You know, all this stuff, it's always, why am I worrying about all that stuff? But I do worry about it. And, it, you know, Nadia will sometimes say, oh, you know, the world isn't thinking about you. I get that. I know the world's not thinking about you. That doesn't help someone who feels painfully self-conscious. You just feel, anyway, so here you go. A number of you asked the question, how are you doing? How are you feeling? That was the name of it, wasn't it? Well, this is how I'm feeling. It's all of this. And I'm not necessarily asking for any advice. These are the thoughts and these are the considerations. And in a very sensible way, there's a sort of list there of things that I'm looking at. And it may well be that I do a bit of all of them. But I certainly am at a point where I feel like I'm on a bit of a treadmill on, a, on an emotional level and on a fundamental psychological level and I, I need it to shift. But anyway, maybe some of that's a help. Put your comments down below, share with us. Maybe what me and Nadia could do is a sort of live mental health chat. Because, uh, you know, and that might be useful. That might be useful, a little bit like we did with the Agony Aunt. I know we've often said that we're going to redo those Agony Aunt things. It really is about time. Sometimes we are just so bushed and so exhausted of an evening. And we love putting all the other content out for you guys. So, so yeah, anyway, let me, know, let me know what you think. I just thought I'd post this just quickly. I'm just waiting in the car. I'm just about to go into a meeting. And I thought it might just be nice just to touch base with you guys, upload it, and have a bit of a chinwag. <laughs>